First of all, Liberia is the only country on this continent of Africa that has the story that it has. Liberia is the only country on the African continent where the first 10 presidents were all African Americans. Really? Yes, you're looking at one of them. And That's who? Joseph Jenkins Roberts. Okay. Joseph Jenkins Roberts. You said, I would, you said first African American, American president. president. So you're trying to say Barack Obama was not the first? No, he wasn't. Okay. Barack Obama was the 11th. This is Motherland, and boy, do we have an amazing video for you today. But right before that, I need you guys to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're not subscribed, I need you to pause this video and go and subscribe. Why? Because according to the analytics, over 95% of you watching this video right now are not subscribed. So let us know. Let us know that you want to see more of this content coming. Leave a comment. Engage with us as you watch this video. Let us know what you think. We are super excited to hear from you. All right, here we go. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is your boy, AKA A Mac, Country Man Come to Town. I'm here with Hester Baker, and we are in Monrovia, Liberia. You want to guess where we are? We are at Ducal Palace. It's a very historical site here in Liberia, and I'll be talking to Miss Hester Baker, and we are going to be having a really interesting conversation. So, Hester, you know, before we get into the meat and potatoes of our conversation, if you can just give us a little background about who you are and what you are currently doing here in Liberia. Okay, so my name is Hester Baker, and I am, of course, from Liberia, but I love to say, you know, if you look at geographically where my family originated, Maryland County, but then the other side of me, um, those American Liberians that came back, so I'm a mixture of both. Um, live in Liberia, came back here in 2006, trying to give back, you know, my background is communications, also tourism. So wanting to sort of get into that space and see, you know, what I could do to also help in the transformation of Liberia, post-war Liberia. Okay. And so I'm here doing my thing. I love it. I'm currently working with the um, International Trade Center, which is implementing a tourism development project in Liberia. And our partners are the Ministry of Information, Cultural Affairs and Tourism, as well as the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So along with the ITC, I'm the national uh, branding and marketing consultant for them. And having a good time, I'm actually enjoying what I'm doing because it gives me a chance to do what I'm doing right now and to really enjoy, you know, Liberia. I get to see everything. Tourism. Yeah. How is tourism in Liberia? Infancy stage. Early stage. It's in the early stage. And what's interesting though is when we, when we say tourism is in an infancy stage, it's a bit interesting because there was a time in Liberia when Liberia was at the forefront of tourism. All right, but we all know what happened in Liberia. And so we sort of have lost some time in okay. getting started. However, the reason that people came in the first place, they're still here. The beautiful beaches, if you look behind us. Yeah. It, you know, so Liberia is still that tourism opportunity that's now getting into a, a I, I guess positioning itself to re you know get restarted and to, to to sort of begin positioning itself back in the Africa landscape and to the world. Okay, so if I'm looking at Ghana, Nigeria and Liberia, hmm. why would I come visit Liberia? What does Liberia have to offer? Let's just get to the point. Why Liberia? Why Liberia? Why? Like why? Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll I'll just give you one little reason why. Okay. First of all, Liberia is the only country on this continent of Africa that has the story that it has. Liberia is the only country on the African continent where the first ten presidents were all African Americans. Really? Yes. You're looking at one of them. And That's who? Joseph Jenkins Roberts. Okay. Joseph Jenkins Roberts. You said I would, you said first African American, American president. president. So you're trying to say Barack Obama was not the first? No, he wasn't. Okay. Barack Obama was the eleventh. <laughs> <laughs> because Joseph Jenkins Roberts, yeah. when he became president in 1847, prior to him, there were no other African Americans that had held that position. Mm -hmm. Joseph Jenkins Roberts was not born in Liberia, or he was not born on the continent of Africa. Okay. He was born in America and repatriated back to Africa in the early 1800s. Likewise, Stephen Allen Benson, Daniel B. Warner, James Briggs Bain, all the way up to G.W. Gibson. 
So they were all African Americans. So that history alone is one history that Liberia has that nowhere else in the world, uh, um, if you look anywhere else in the world, you will not find that history. So just that alone, I mean, standing here, mm -hmm. we're sort of standing on, on a ground that I almost want to say should be sacred because this is Africa's first, I mean, this is the world's first African-American president. I wish Barack Obama could come to this spot and stand here as well. <laughs> okay, so he was the first African-American president off Liberia. Yes. And like you said, off the world. Right. Okay. So let's dive into uh, the meat and potato of tourism in Liberia. Okay. So I heard what you said and I learned a very uh, interesting history today about, you know, just Joseph Jenkins Roberts being the first African-American president. That's something, you know, I did not know. Wow. Very, uh, very, very interesting fact. So tourism in Liberia. Uh, so is the government doing anything to position Liberia, you know, to be, you know, at the forefront of tourism? in the next couple of years. What are some of the programs you guys are working on? Because I heard you say you work for different uh, government entities and private entities that are trying to develop the uh, tourism sector. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're doing right now, um, about, la well, the year before last November, we began working on a branding and marketing strategy for Liberia okay. for tourism. So once again, like I said, that is being implemented by the International Trade Center. The funder of that is an organization called the Enhanced Integrated Framework. However, we are working in partnership with the Ministry of Information, Cultural Affairs and Tourism. And the whole purpose of that is to really begin to lay the foundation for tourism in Liberia. You cannot have tourism, first of all, if you don't have a brand. So the first thing we did was we went through a series of engagements in, uh, that were held in 20, 2020. November all the way up until January 2021. We were able to develop a new brand for Liberia. The brand is called Amazing Discoveries. Amazing Discoveries. Amazing Discoveries. Okay. Along with that, we were able to travel the length and breadth of Liberia. We were able to get an image library for Liberia, which is the second component because you do need marketing collaterals in order to be able to market a destination. Okay. Liberia as a country has many, many destinations. Liberia as a country has a lot of natural resources for, for you know, lack of a better word. The natural resources include the um, rainforest, for example. When you look at Liberia, Liberia has the largest remaining portion of what is known as the Upper Guinea Rainforest. Now, the Upper Guinea Rainforest is one of the last remaining virgin rainforests in the world. In the world. Liberia has 40%. You mean the whole wild world? In the whole world. Okay. Yes, it's a very 40%. Um, endemic forest because you have a lot of species in that forest okay. that are rare and endemic to Liberia. So you have, for example, we all have heard about species such as the hippo, the pygmy hippo. Yes. That is endemic to Liberia. But then you also have other species that might not be as big as the pygmy hippo, but there are, like, for example, you have a nimba, the nimba otter shrew. You also have the pygmy elephants. You have the, um, the white, the, the giant white, uh, what do they call it, the African giant swallowtail, which is a butterfly, the, butterfly yeah. the largest in Africa. So Liberia's rainforest is one. Then you also have many beautiful waterfalls. If okay. you go to Bapulu, you have about three or four waterfalls in Bapulu. If you go to Bung County, you have two amazing waterfalls, Patawis, um, Seyuga waterfalls. You go into Nimba, you have waterfalls in Nimba. Um, you go wow. into Sapo, into Sindu, you have waterfalls. So Liberia is a country with a lot of beautiful waterfalls. You also have mountains. Liberia has the Gola National Forest, yes. which is a mountain that we share with Sierra Leone. In Nimba, we also have the East Nimba Nature Reserve, which has been become a dedicated nature reserve spot. On the other side of that mountain, Guinea has been able to have their portion of the Nimba Mountain become a UNESCO heritage site. So, you, you, of course, let's not forget about our beaches. We have 360 miles of unbroken coastline. So untapped? Untapped, unbroken. Wow. That's impressive. Straight along the coast. Okay. You don't have anywhere in between where it breaks. So we have a lot of beautiful natural sites that can already be used for adventure tourism. So if you have travelers that are saying, look, I don't care about the electricity, I don't care about the water, give me my, camp, my tent, I want to go into the forest, I want to go into the mountains, I want to go into the, you know, some of these waterfall sites, it's ready. 
it's all I mean it's ready and then we also have culture and we have history our culture is very unique in that it's a confluence of both the African-American and the indigenous culture that's unique in itself and that's this is the only country in Africa where you find that confluence then we also have our own culture you know as our indigenous culture which yes. is also beautiful you know and it varies from county to county then our history you know the only place in Africa where the oldest country on the continent and then the history of how we, be, we became and who what the role we played in in Africa's renaissance you know is another story so Liberia is a tiny little country but it's it's a wealthy country when it comes to tourism and rich in history yes okay so uh, that's a wealth of, of information y'all that's a lot of information <laughs> so I'm hope you're taking this all in so follow-up question um, so what would be like what would you recommend for a backpacker that wants to come to Liberia first thing first destination first place East Nimba Nature Reserve why is that oh my god I was there about two or three weeks ago it is a beautiful mountain and it is some it's a place where you have in the morning it's misty it's that, that mist that comes up from the mountain oh, wow yeah. it's you have this staircase mountain so it looks like steps coming down you have the blue lake that's in the middle of the mountain you oh have many, awesome yes yes so you can you know camp out by the blue lake you and and what's interesting about the blue lake if you take like a mm. rock or something and you throw it yes. it boomerangs Wow. So it's quite interesting, the Blue Lake. Then you also have in that mountain, we have the bat cave. So you can actually go through and into a cave and nothing but bats. <laughs> if you like bats. <laughs> if, you, if you're not afraid of bats. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I did walk in there and it's interesting because they don't bother you. Okay. You know, and then you also have the rangers that are already there. Protecting it. Protecting it, but they also are very knowledgeable about the biodiversity. So they can okay. tell you about every plant and animal that's in that in that mountain, and then beautiful hiking mountain as well. Wow! And how long would that take you to you know from Morovia to uh, that park? How many hours you okay. say drive? So from Morovia to Ganta, it yeah. take about three hours. Three hours okay. from Ganta into Yekipa, where the mountain is, two hours. So and they have five hours. and they have hotels around that you can stop, you know, spend the night. In 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 Yekipa, there is one hotel. Okay. Um, that's right. It's called Alvino. And it's Alvin, in okay. Yekipa, it's at the foothill of the mountain. Okay. And then you also have in Ganta, which is the capital city of Nimba, there are quite a few beautiful hotels. I mean, Ganta is a competition, right? It's in competition right now. It's like every hotel is trying to outdo the other. So you find, nice. if you're looking for luxury with pools and all that, yeah. it's in Ganta. So you can always stay in Ganta and in the morning, if you want to get up and then go into the mountains, you can do that. Okay, that's, uh, that's, that's awesome. But uh, so I had a program here in Liberia. I think it was successful. Mm -hmm. I think we we could have had a bigger turnout. Okay. But one of the things I encountered, you know, bringing a lot of folks from the states was the visa. What's the visa issue? So I had an aviation program where you know I brought you know a few pilots, flight attendants, mechanics, and uh, we actually planned for 30 to come. But once we did a Q and A with all the requirements, uh, it was a turn off. I would say a turn up, but yeah, it was a deterrent, more mm -hmm. of a deterrent uh, to get visa, to do your COVID, just all the requirements, you know. And the came and say, hey, you know, AMAC, I would really like to come to Liberia, but you know, the visa fees, you know, I can go to another country, you know, and there's no visa requirement. I can go to uh, Jamaica, I can go to Caribbean, and there's no visa requirement. Or they have visa on arrival, you know, for much cheaper if you come to do something like a community service uh, to give back in a community. So what are some of the barriers that you see to entry for tourism, like a backpacker? And who is the government, uh, I, can, I should say, rather, the uh, Liberian uh, businesses are trying to attract? What uh, segment, uh, you know, are they trying to, to attract younger folks or are they trying to attract, you know, retirement, you know, retirees? So what's the, you know, what's the goal and, and what is that demographics? Okay, so in terms of the visa, yeah, that is something that really, has to be worked on because to be a competitive destination you have to understand that other destinations are competing for the same visitor so therefore their every, every destination is trying to make it as easy as possible so that people can enter you know for almost for little or nothing you know or um, also very easily so you find the countries around us Ghana and, and Senegal and Gambia they've really worked on that on those processes and so now getting into those destinations are 
you find it much easier. And Liberia right now has gone through that process of the visa on delivery, which okay. has been passed, at, I believe, at both the lower and upper houses. And so now it's now at the executive branch for signing. And then once it's signed, then you can do visa, visa on delivery, which is then that, that, that barrier is, is gone. In terms of the kinds of visitors that Liberia is trying to attract, I would say that millennials are wonderful. You already have the baby boomers that come, let's say, every year. You have, yeah. We call them Decembris. Decembris. And they come <laughs> along with their, baby, with their millennial kids. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. now you also have the generation behind the millennials, you know, that are a little bit more difficult to read, but they're coming along as well. So you, right now, what I saw this past December, I saw all levels. And it was quite interesting because I was sitting at Royal, probably like 21, 22 year olds, and they were actually discussing the bicentennial and having a heated debate. And everybody had that C reason in their mouth. I said, oh Lord, here comes so the question for you, Generation Z. <laughs> what, is, what is the uh, bicentennial? I keep hearing, you know, that buzzword yeah. everywhere I go. What is that exactly? Do you want to, yeah. you know, expand on that a little bit? Yeah. Bicentennial, what is that and what does that mean? Okay. Is there anything significant about the bicentennial? Okay, so Anthony, to give you the best, best concept of the bicentennial, I think we're at the right spot. So what I want us to do is just take a walk. You see this piece of beautiful art? I think yeah. this tells the story of what the bicentennial is. Okay. So we'll start on this side where I think the story actually begins. So if you look at this story, this story is depicting, depicting his, um, um, slavery. Yeah. Obviously you see the man probably in the field. You see another man in the field. You see someone who's probably begging for mercy. You see, you see the agony of slavery yeah. here. So these people experiencing slavery decided in 1821, no, in 1820, to board a ship and leave America as a few, 88 people, I'm sorry, 86 people that formed part of that first group of freed blacks to say, you know what, we want to go back to the motherland. We've had our time in the US they've gone through they were going through hell as you can see this this is showing yes and so now they leave and of course go through Chevro Island which is in Sierra Leone then you have Jehudi Ashman and those people coming into Liberia coming up Cape Mesurata which is right up here all right Beautiful coming theory. through the whole Cape Mesurata area discovering the island which is behind us Providence Island landing there and it takes us to the next point so here you see that it wasn't so easy. They arrived, yes. right? And obviously you're seeing what is uh, a, a, apparently one of those free African-Americans. You see the cannon. You see that there were some struggles. There were struggles, yes. you know, at this point. So they now arrived in 1822 on the shores of Liberia. Okay, when you talk about the bicentennial, we are in 2022. So the 2022 that we're looking at marks 200 years of the arrival of the first 88 freed blacks. Say what? Yes, yes. 200 years old. 200 years since they first arrived back on the African soil. Wow. So these are descendants of slaves that came back in 1822. And so it begins the story. Then in 1822, well, Actually, 1821, December, uh, I believe it was December 15th, 1821, yes. the negotiation takes place. This, I'm assuming, is King Salboso. This, I'm assuming, might be Jehudi Ashman or Captain Robert Stockton. Actually, I think this is Captain Stockton. I think this is Jehudi Ashman. They were not African Americans. There were two. One, Captain Stockton was, of course, the ship captain. And Jehudi Ashman was the first governor of this new colony on the African continent. So this, so you see the chiefs, you had King Peter and I believe another Peter that all formed part along with King Saul Bosu, who was from the Bapalu area, Lofa area. And they had the, the first negotiation toward land acquisition on this new soil. Then of course, from here, you go into the history of 1847, where now you have the hoisting of a flag so now you have the first president, Joseph Jenkins Roberts, being installed into office. 
and you see now the people that are coming together so of course he's representing the indigenous culture you know you have also representing the indigenous culture then you have the african-american culture so this is now 1847 where you have the formation of a country so when we talk about 1822 it's also important to understand when we talk about celebrating 2022 of the bicentennial it's also important to note that liberia became the only country on the continent of Africa in 1822 that said no to slavery. So Liberia said no to slavery. Liberia, at that time, it was not Liberia, That's but it was the 18, colony. 1822. When they arrived on this continent, okay. of course, coming from a history of slavery, they did not want to see, see slavery again. But then you also had brothers like King Saboso and King Peter that also said, we agree. So together, these men became abolitionists for, I, I'm not sure if that's what they were termed at that time, but they began going onto the high seas and they began capturing slaving vessels that were leaving for the Western world. So these, these people that were now on this soil yeah. would capture people. When you hear about the Congo, that you hear now in Liberia. So what does that mean? They were actually on, those were people that were being taken into the New World as slaves, and they were captured because the, the new group of free blacks, along with those that were already on the ground, said, no, there will be no more slavery. So they were capturing those people, putting them onto vessels, and in Liberia they became free men and women. So that's why you had also 18, so 1822 represents more a history of pan-Africanism because what you saw in Liberia was not just the freed blacks from America but you saw it coming together of the indigenous people that were already on this ground you had the freed blacks from America and now you also had liberated Africans that were being liberated off slave ships so when we talk about celebrating the bicentennial this year in Liberia it's a history of freedom and if you look if you really get into Liberia in the 60s you will yeah. realize that Liberia did become a home for freedom fighters. You know, so when you had um, South Africa, for example, going through apartheid, yeah. Liberia became home to Nelson Mandela. He lived in Liberia. Um, you had Hugh Masekela. You had Miriam Akiba. All of those people were South African freedom fighters. Then you also began to see in the 70s the entry of people from America that were also fighting for black rights in America. So like the Black Panthers. So you started to see people like Nina Simone coming in and, and that made Liberia home. So the history of Liberia, we talk about the bicentennial yes. and the theme of the bicentennial, which is commemorating 200 years of Pan-Africanism and freedom. That's what it's all about. Wow, you, you guys heard that? Look, <laughs> I gotta go back and sit down and actually watch this thing. I mean, yeah. that's a lot of knowledge. Yeah. Pan-African, Pan-African, Pan-Africanism. You talk about Nelson Mandela. You talk about Liberia, Liberia being, a, you know, a place for freedom fighters. So Liberia is truly, you know, free for Africans. Yes, it is. Wow. Yeah. If you, and if there was a guy in the in the um, early 1800s, his name was Edward Wilmot Blyden, and he was actually from the British West Indies, and he yeah. came to Liberia at the age of 18. He was born in 1832, came in 1850. He called Liberia the home of Pan Negroism. Pan Negroism. Which later became Pan Africanism. And if you heard about Marcus Garvey, yes. Marcus Garvey also said Liberia was the home of Pan Africanism. So is it safe to say this is where Pan Africanism started? Yes, it is. In Liberia. 100%. 100%. Wow, a lot of history. So Liberia has a very rich history. So I know we started, we started talking about tourism, and this leads into tourism, but why isn't this? incorporated in the school system the history it needs to be it needs to be and i think we have some really good historians like dr patrick borrows who we see now he's actually in liberia this year especially at a time like now with the bicentennial he's actually going into schools he's meeting with students so i i hope dr borrows you have also dr herbert brewer that's also another historian on liberia's history so i'm praying and hoping and i think dr borrows has already written um, a book i think yes. something about the book yeah so the Kola, the Kola, I forgot the name of the Kola Forest, something between the Kola. Yeah, I don't remember the name myself, but uh, quite interesting because a lot of things you stated here today, I myself did not know. Right. So it's, uh, 
it's really uh, interesting. Like I said, we're going to be having, we, 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 we are having a very interesting yeah. conversation. So this is all new and this is, you know, very informative and I'm, I'm hoping some, you know, some of the viewers will, will, will learn a thing or two about what you're saying here today and yeah, Pan-Africanism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is where it all started. This is where it started. So safety, let's get back to, you know, what we're talking about, safety, right? Mm -hmm. As a, uh, yes, we can walk. Okay. Safety, mm -hmm. when it comes to safety, you know, if I'm leaving the Western world coming to uh, Liberia, the first thing that comes to mind is safety. Right. When I look online, I don't see much positive information about the safety in my rural Liberia. Mm -hmm. So, my question to you is, do you feel safe in of the course. streets of Liberia? 100%. I've been here since 2006. Mm -hmm. So let me also give this. I brought my children to Liberia. Um, they attended school in Liberia. They love Liberia. I've been in Liberia now since 2006. I have nothing to report about my safety. I go out at night, I come home, I'm safe. So when, before coming to Liberia, I remember people really scaring me. Yes. I mean, people sat, I remember being, I mean, somebody sat me down and asked me, said, why would you do that to your kids? What are you doing? And I'm thinking, really, is it that bad? But I, I'm, a, I'm one of those people that want to see things for myself. And for some reason, it's our home. If we are afraid to come to our own home, then who else can we invite to come? So I decided, let me go and check it out. And no, Liberia, when I look at other countries around the world, I lived in America. I know what it means to be unsafe. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> this is better. <laughs> okay. You might have petty theft, yeah. all right, because you are in, a, in an environment where you do have a high poverty rate. But people, I mean, it's, it's, it's petty theft. But the level of crime that I've seen in other countries, I haven't seen it here. And I've lived in Buchanan. I have a resort in Buchanan, Elizabeth Village. There has been, I mean, we've had, we have not had any incidences at my place. Um, I worked for a company called ArcelorMittal. I lived on their site. Nothing ever happened. And I've been in Monrovia and I haven't seen anything. So maybe if something is out there, I'm not sure what it is, but um, I think Liberia is pretty safe. You know, if, okay. yes, I think it is. So, yeah. so then why do we get so much bad PR when you, you know, when you, when you search Liberia on, you know, online, we get a lot, you know, we get a lot of bad rep, bad media. Why is that? Why do we get a lot of positive news coming out from country instead? We get a lot of negativity. So, and that really makes someone who hasn't been to Liberia for years, right. you know, really scared, you know, like really terrified. Like, you know, I'm not going down, you know, it's safe. You know, you, when, you, when you turn on, it's all, you know, people getting killed, you know, armed um, robberies and, and things, you know, along those lines. Do you have any idea or, or any... To We're not telling our story. You know, your narrative, if you don't write your own narrative, Someone or if you don't will. know how to write your own narrative, whatever narrative goes out, that's what people buy. So I think, first of all, our media in Liberia, the narrative, everything we do now is in real time. Yes, if you publish, is. our newspapers are small newspapers. You don't have the mega newspapers here. So you'll have a small newspaper that might publish a story. But most newspapers nowadays also have their online component. So many of these stories go online in real time. And if we do not start to tell the good stories, most of our newspapers, look, I'll just be very frank, are political. And sometimes I do ask, the owners in Liberia, media owners, why don't you have lifestyle stories? Why don't you talk about the arts, the culture, the fashion, the food, the wine, the this, the that? You know, why is it that all of the stories are geared towards politics and the gory? You know, and I think many times it's for sensationalism. However, I believe that unless we begin to tell other stories about Liberia, like what you're doing now, this is a prime example of Imagine if there were more people telling the stories, story along the line of what you're doing. Then that's yeah. what will be online. You know, if someone go, goes into Google and search Liberia, and if we had more of these stories, then that's what people will see. But unfortunately, these stories are not being told. And unless, and it's not just Liberia, it's Africa. Unless yes. Africa begins to tell its story in a better way, I don't think we'll get our stories out. Wow. I right now, let me say this, Africa gets only 3% of world tourism earnings. 
world tourism earnings. What, what is it worth? Pro, pre pre COVID, it was one point one trillion dollars. One point one trillion. Right. So you hear that, folks? One point one trillion dollars. Africa, pre COVID, only received three percent of that. Liberia, on the bottom of the barrel for West Africa. So, as much as we have to say about Liberia, imagine where we're positioned. It's it's it doesn't make sense. You know, we have so much, so we need to work harder to get people to come and see what we have, and especially the Liberian diaspora. Let them be the first to come. I'm here, you know, and I'm enjoying it. I'm I ain't here. going back. What? You're not going back? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Only okay. the visit. So, got my last question is, what questions, or what question I should be asking that I'm not asking? No, I think you're, you've asked the right questions, and I think that, um, as you do more of these uh, series, I think you'll find more, and you'll uncover more and more. I think you're only at the tip of the iceberg. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Folks, this is Hester Bicker. Thanks for tuning in. It's your boy, AKA Country Mac. Country Man, come to time. Yeah, my people. Hester, is there anything you want to say in Kolokwa to the people? My people, yeah, come That our country, yeah. We, yeah, we're making it happen. Small, small. <laughs> Yo, you y'all come, y'all come visit. <laughs> This is LIB. Yes. It got correct destination. Fun, 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 you can see it. <laughs> All right, thanks, Esther. Thank you, It's Evan. a pleasure.